the film's over reliance on comedy um, gets incredibly just tiring. It's just at any time yeah. something potentially dramatic surfaces, it they they don't do anything interesting with it or take us to anywhere that's that's taking advantage of having of seeing Spider Man in this new perspective. It's comedy over consequence. That's the entire film summed yeah. up is yeah. they'd rather go for the laugh than the actual hang on, what does this mean? And I mean the, the ending sums it up perfectly. You know, it's it's oh God, it's yeah. such a moment where when that and happens, and I guess we can talk spoilers, right? I, mean, I I feel like at this point everyone's seen the movie. Oh yeah, yeah, spoilers galore. Spoilers galore. Aunt May sees her 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 underage boy um, dressed as Spider Man and yells, "What the fuck?" And of course, the whole theater that I'm in fucking laughs hysterically because this <laughs> is so funny. Aunt May is freaking out because her nephew is Spider Man. And it's, it's it, I just remember sitting there being so furious because at this point I'm already kind of bored, and to have that as the ending, it's played up for this big like oh that's it ha ha ha, when in reality you would be like wait hold on what like this big moment of Aunt May discovering that Peter is Spider Man is it should be this this huge just I I don't know it should be more. And that's what a lot of this movie is. It should be more. You think it'd be more, but it isn't. It's just like, ha, 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 oh, Spider-Man, you're so funny. You're nothing. <laughs> it's there's no there's no gravitas. There's there's no anything. It's just I get it that they want to keep this like low level, you know, street things, the the lowest of stakes. You know, the world isn't gonna explode. Peter's just you know not gonna be friends with someone I guess but then none of that even matters because he's always going to be friends with people and they're always going to be fine with him no matter how many times he leaves or how many times he, he gets in trouble it's like oh it's fine it's whatever and that's what I feel like how are we going to react to that in Infinity War you know we're not going to see Aunt May be like oh my god my son my nephew my boy he's going to space to fight Josh Brolin <laughs> that's not going to happen and if it does then cool great but the fact that they have to now deal with that too Oh my goodness! It feels like Homecoming almost takes place in a separate parody universe, where it's like there's yeah, the absolutely. Marvel universe where Tony Stark and all these characters have problems and they've been doing this thing since 2008, and then you've got Sony's MCU. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's an offshoot. It's it's bizarre. It feels weird. It's so Marvel Studios, but none of the stuff that we actually like about Marvel Studios, and it's so Sony and all the stuff that we hate about Sony. It's the it's the perfect amalgamation of all the things that don't actually make the movie good, but on a surface level, hey, hey, well, that was a nice sort of light, you know, just whatever. It's, it's good because it made me laugh and I had a good time. And you can you can say that. You can have that opinion. But for me, Spider-Man is, is this huge moment. I always think of this one moment from Spider-Man 2. It's a little tiny moment, but it makes you feel something. It's the part where he's he's chasing down the train and he's like going sort of like swinging up the side of a building you had this moment of like ah uh, ah uh, cause his momentum slows down because he's going up you know gravity's kicking in but then he reaches it and he goes phew and he flies over it and you, you feel that moment you feel that moment of Spider-Man like wow Spider-Man is a spectacle and there's never any spectacle in this movie of Spider-Man Spider-Man is just a kid and like you were mentioning how it's like Tony Stark sees him as a kid he's this annoying kid that's always bugging uh, John Favreau and that's it. There's never a moment where he's not just a kid at all. There's no there's no anything. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. I like I have two points on that as well like, you know, the notion of comedy over, you know, actually progressing the story in a positive way like the other thing that happens towards the end is they basically undo all of the major characterization <laughs> with Tony Stark in Civil War and uh, and just yeah. Pepper's there, they're together. He's going to propose it's because it's funny. And, I mean, sure, the line about John Favreau being like, oh, I've had this ring in my pocket since 2008. It's like, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's very self-aware. It's, it's kind of amusing, I guess. And if there was nothing else like that in the film, maybe I'd find that funny. But, you know, they just undo all this characterization, you know, that they did for Tony Stark in Civil War by doing that. Like, him and Pepper not being together was one of the more interesting things in that movie for Tony Stark. Um, and on your point, Anthony, as well, about, like, you know, the leap up the wall, I should say, in Spider-Man 2, like, that's another thing that I think is really missing from this movie is 
good filmmaking. You know, like obviously the, the Richard Donner <laughs> Superman. Yeah, the Richard Donner Superman is like, will you believe a man can fly? And then like to me, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films, like especially in the first two, um, you know, you just you feel that web slinging. You know, like you you just follow him. In, like they invented technology to do that in the first film, and uh, like that Go was for some the ultimate the, spin. <laughs> exactly, that was the tagline. Yeah, and you know, and it wasn't style over substance either. It was, it was um, spectacle that was motivated by good characterization and high emotions. When Spider-Man swings off at the end of the first film, it's not a simple look at this, look at what we can do. It's fly in the air with this character that you you feel mm-hmm. with. You know, it's 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 way more than than just that and. I mean, there's none of that in this. No, and and that was going to be my thing as well. Is like, each interpretation of Spider-Man appears to have tried to capture that. You know, like, the Sam Raimi films, like I said, they invented this technology. You feel like you're swinging there with Spider-Man. Um, it's such a cinematic spectacle, like you said. Spectacle, I think, is the best word to describe that stuff. Um, you know, the final swing, you know, off the flagpole and all of that, and same with Spider-Man 2 and... And there's there's some of that in three as well, but not as much. Um, and then in amazing, like they said, okay, well we want to do the web swinging practical. And you know, I, I applaud them for wanting to do that at least. You know, that I, I like the I appreciate yep. the attempt. Um, and that some of it looks really good. Um, and uh, then in in amazing two, they just sort of gave up on the practical and they just went with the spectacle again. And it might not be quite the same as the originals, but there's still you know you still get some really cool uh, uh, visuals of Spider-Man swinging through the city at the very beginning of the film and and that. And uh, then here, I mean, you kind of don't get any of that. Um, you get to see the other stuff like. Him standing on a ledge and doing a flip, and uh, and, and getting changed, and uh, and then we end on a joke. Like it's 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 the the stuff about him being Spider Man that's boring that they show, it's which like, which can yes, be fun sitting around too. doing yes. nothing. Well, that's that's the thing, you know. I understand their predicament that that they're in. You know, they can't they can't be the Sam Raimi films and they can't be the amazing films. So I understand the temptation to make a Spider Man movie that does everything differently, that, that brings him down to a kind of ground level, you know, that he's not swinging off on the skyscrapers, you know, it's a very, it's very much a human story about him, which is what Spider-Man is supposed to be. The problem, I mean, like, when you read the um, the classic Ditko comics, I mean, half the time, to be honest, I kind of skim read the action, because I'm just waiting for the next scene where Peter Parker interacts with Betty Brant or, or whoever, mm-hmm. Um, and I think one of the big problems with this film, and it bugged me that so many people were claiming that this was like a John Hughes movie, because to me, saying that <laughs> this is like a John Hughes movie yeah. implies that we're really going to sit down with these new characters and see those interactions play out, but they're not really characters, they're caricatures, they're they're cartoon cutouts where they'll show up for a scene, they'll say a line, they'll do their bit, Peter will react, and then we just move on. Like, there's... The closest you get to a relation, to a, like a, a dynamic or a relationship, is Peter and Ned. I don't really like Ned. They don't bring anything interesting out of their friendship. Um, Peter not going to the party, that's never confronted. It never puts their friendship in, je- in jeopardy. But, you know, we never get to know Liz. We barely get to know Flash. Um, and what we get from him... It is just confusing. He's supposed to idolize Spider-Man, but Spider-Man steals his dad's car and then intentionally crashes it into some bins or something. Um, and it's just, these aren't characters, and I'm going to compare this to the first Sam Raimi film, and we are allowed to do this. Um, I'm sorry, I just remembered the, the scene where Spider-Man drives a car. I <laughs> I completely forgot that was in the movie. I don't know how, but yeah, he like wrecks his car. That was a thing yeah. that happened. Oh, okay, continue. I'm sorry. I just... (laughs) I mean, like, I don't mind you putting Spider-Man in a car and making a gag out of it, you know, whatever. In fact, this time watching it, I did slight. I did kind of chuckle when he goes onto the golf field and shoots out web and he can't do anything. It's it's a little gag about... It's a meta beat. It's a meta gag about Spider-Man. You do it once, fine. It's reasonably funny. I don't like the Ferris Bueller reference. I think it's It's on the nose and incredibly... um, 
it just takes it just really does not give its audience any credit whatsoever to the point where you have to have a tv in a garden that no one's watching it's facing the swimming pool like what and it's just to it, it's just one of those other things where instead of actually being a homage it's like lip service it's telling the audience this is what we're doing rather than actually doing it um but what i was going to say about you know the first um spider-man film sam raimi's is that each of the characters are three-dimensional and they all have something to do in terms of peter parker he's he's like the central catalyst for for everyone norman idolizes him and wishes he were his son harry resents peter for that harry goes after mary jane who peter is in love with like the the thanksgiving scene like they they all just sit around waiting for peter to come home like the, and and they all have interesting dynamics norman and aunt may don't really like each other um norman and mary jane don't like each other like it's a it's a soap opera which is what spider-man is and you know yeah. you could take any of those scenes in that movie and you could say what each of those ca- who each of those characters are and what the dynamic there is it's not just that kirsten dunce shows up for a scene says a line and then walks off you know it it's it's actually about people and that's what this should have been you can lower the stakes of spider-man you can you know what i could even watch a spider-man movie with no action um because the important part is the personal drama and they just never gave anyone a proper character no it's one thing to give them you know a quip or a line of dialogue but to but to 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 base so much to presumably base so much you know drama or tragedy on the fact that Peter's letting these people down. Well, quite frankly, we don't know who these people are, so who gives a shit? If you enjoyed this segment and you'd like to hear the entire podcast, you can visit the link below, where you can also find a link to some more artwork by Jeremy Fascaldo, who so graciously designed this banging new Sam's Channel title card. Feel free to also consider supporting me on Patreon if you'd like to see video reviews before they go public. Cheers for watching, guys, and as always, if you like this video, you can subscribe to my channel.